Hey guys, this is Versatile from Game Dexterity. So in today's video tutorial, if you can consider it as a tutorial, I'm going to be talking about the PlayStation 2 modding scene at, in an overall high perspective level to get those who are interested to the PlayStation 2, or maybe you have a PlayStation 2 and you're interested in how to, you know, how to mod the system, or maybe you have a friend who wants to know how to mod their system, or maybe you already know how to mod, you know, iPhone or PS3 or other consoles, but you want to get back to your gaming roots and explore the PlayStation 2. So I decided to create this uh, special PowerPoint, and over the course of time, based upon your guys' feedback, I will update the PowerPoint and have a more info section for you to download. So why did I create this video? And I, I promise you this video is going to be a little bit long, so, but that's good because there's a lot of information that I need to take care of, and I only want to do it one time. So just a quick back background of my own history. I started off with the PlayStation 2 in 2007, the summer of 2007, um, basically starting my modding journey there. And I went online and I read a lot of piss poor guys and a lot of video tutorials and forums and I really suffered back then. Don't get me wrong. Um, PS2 is in retrospect a pretty uh, an easy system to mod, but there's a lot of information out there that may not be very user friendly or um, hard to understand for the average Joe, okay? And that's why I'm here. So so these past couple years I basically learned about almost every single mod available for the PlayStation 2 and I've done almost every single mod here so I'll, I'm pretty confident that I can call myself an expert and I have various PS2 videos here on Game Dexterity so by all means I hope this video um, perks up your interest so that you can go see the other videos and see what you have been missing. So rather than keep on talking about why I'm making this video let's go straight into the presentation and hopefully that will be more clear for those who want to investigate the PS2 scene further on their own. So I created this PowerPoint presentation, and I'll have it available for download. So this is an introduction to PS2 modding, and this is really created or geared towards parents, you know, moms and dads, grandparents, maybe children, maybe, hey, children, you have your kids or teenagers, you want to use this video as a way to convince your parents or your friends to get some money together to mod your PlayStation 2 consoles, great. And PS2 enthusiasts, those who love the console and didn't know that they can tap into it to enable additional features, this overview video presentation should really help you out and get you started in the right direction, hopefully. So real quick, real quick, for those who are not familiar with the PlayStation 2, this is just a home entertainment console built by Sony, introduced by Sony in 2001. It plays PlayStation 1 games, PS2 games, and also plays DVD movies. And there are two different models of the PlayStation 2. There's a fat PS2, which can also use an internal hard drive. You get the accessory. And then there's a slim PS2, which is one-third the size of the fat PS2. And I like the slim PS2 because it has a built-in network port, and that becomes more important later on as we talk about the homebrew applications. So, what does it mean to mod? By definition, my definition, modding is the act of doing a modification to the PS2 device. And there's actually two types of mods, okay? There's a hard mod, which is basically where you're doing a physical uh, modification to the hardware. So, like a mod chip. A mod chip is basically a microprocessor chip where you can solder or you can, there's also non-solder versions that you have to basically open up your PS2 and install this chip onto your PS2 motherboard and then that enables additional features. The only problem or risk is with the solder version, if you uh, do it wrong or you screw up, you may destroy your PS2 and make it uh, bricked or just doesn't work anymore. So that's the high risk. And the price ranges from you know, like $14.95 to as high as $60 plus dollars without tax, before tax, online, if you want to go that route. But they're pretty reliable. Once you install it, just do it once and that's it. Soft mod, less risk. You can't really hurt your PS2 with a soft mod. And uh, it doesn't void your warranty. And there's different uh, devices you can use to do this. You can use a boot disk, uh, um, exploited memory card, or other device like AR Max, which is a cheat code type device or code breakers. Or other um, devices too, and this this does not void void your warranty because you don't have to open up the PlayStation 2. Um, well, I take that back because with the slim PS2, you do have to open it up if you are doing the taping down the sensor, so that may void your warranty. But other than that, you know, overall in general, it does not void your warranty, and the price ranges from zero dollars because if you know a friend who has these tools, it can you know cost you nothing to have your memory card exploited, or as high as $30 you know, if you're buying stuff online, like Swap Magic, which I'll get to soon. So, 
what, how does modding benefit me, right? Why do I want to consider modding? So this is why. Well, the first thing, and I'm pretty sure that this is at the top reason why every single person wants to mod their PS2, is it allows playing copy games. So like, for example, let's say you have a game library of 10 games. You don't want your dog or your, your baby or whoever to scratch your disc and, and, and ruin your game so you have to go out and buy a new game. What you can do is make a copy of that original game, put that original game somewhere safe, and then you can use a backup copy and play it on your PS2, which is nice. So allows you to play a legitimate backups of games you own, However, and I just have to throw it out there, there are people out there that are using a PS2 for, you know, different purposes. And, um, you know, they use it to allow playing backups of games that they don't own. Maybe they borrowed a game from a friend and they ripped it, and then they're playing it on their own PS2. Or maybe they uh, download it off the internet. And, um, you know, people do it all the time. And and um, I just want to say that because there are people doing it and... There's nothing I can do about it. There's nothing you can do about it. It's just the nature of the game. So I just want to keep that clear for parents that are interested in modding their PlayStation 2 that, you know, your children or your 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 friends or kids may consider doing this for all the wrong reasons. Just to make that as a as a note to consider. But anyways, on to the other subjects. Um, modding helps you out because it extends the laser life of the PS2. So like for example, this will allow you to boot games from a USB hard drive, like an external hard drive. And if you have a fat PS2 with the internal hard drive kit, you can play games off the internal hard drive there for really quick speeds. Um, also you can play or boot games shared over the Ethernet cable. So like for example, you have a router that connects your PC to your PlayStation 2. Or maybe you have a crossover cable that you connect between your PC and your PlayStation 2. And you can share games. So let's say the PlayStation 2 is playing a game that is physically stored on your PC. And that does not use your PlayStation 2 laser. So that definitely extends the laser life of the PlayStation 2 console. In addition, you can allow loading of homebrew content. So you can play like game emulators like MAME, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, uh, the original Nintendo. You can play those type of games. You can have different media applications, special launchers. Um, you can also play AVI movies on the flash drive or USB hard drive, which is, which is pretty cool using the SMS player. And then the last but not least, you can also back up or transfer your save game files. So you can take your save game files on your PS2 memory card, transfer it to a USB thumb drive to store it on your PC, or you could go online to like GameFacts.com, download a 100% save file, and then transfer that to your PlayStation 2, and then play your game accordingly. So there's a lot of benefits to modding your PlayStation 2 if, of course, that's something that you want to do and you're willing to invest the time and the resources as necessary. So, real quick here, Swap Magic Disc, this is a popular mod, and I'm, I'm just talking about this just to expand your horizons, and if you don't like the information I'm telling you uh, and right now and in the future slides, and I'm sorry in advance, okay? But So Swap Magic <laughs> is a CD and a DVD boot disc, and you can purchase it online. No, you cannot download Swap Magic, and even if you could, your PS2 is not going to read it because it's not a retail silver press disc, and I'll make... I'll talk about a little bit more in the next slide. But anyways, the latest version is 3.8, but the most popular version is 3.6 plus. The price you can buy it online about you know about twenty to thirty dollars before tax. But hey, if you stop eating out, you stop buying clothes, you stop paying for gas and ride your bicycle everywhere, you know thirty dollars is like chump change, and you can purchase Swap Magic um, anytime. So how does it work? Well, basically, for the fat PS2, what you do is you insert your 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 Swap Magic, the CD or DVD version, turn on the PS2, it boosts the Swap Magic, goes to the Swap Magic screen, and then the disc stops spinning. And then you gotta use something called a slide tool to unlock the disc tray and pull it out. So you take off the little front panel on the fat PS2, take the slide tool, slide it to the right, pull out the disc tray, put in your backed up game, close the tray, use the slide tool to lock it, the mechanism to the left hand side, press the X on the controller and play and you're good to go. With a slim PS2, you do have to open up the PS2 because you want to block these three door sensors with the tape and tissue mod or just other different mods like um, tape and straw mod or, or whatever. And so you want to block those three sensors because what you want to do is you, you insert your Swap Magic disc, right? Turn on the PS2, Swap Magic screen appears, and then the disc is stops spinning. But you have to open up the lid. 
And if you open up the lid and you don't block your three sensors, the PS2 is going to say, hey, my door is open. So when you insert your swap disc and press X with the door closed, the lid closed, the PS2 is going to give you like this red uh, error that says, you know, invalid PS2 disc. So that's why we want to block the sensors so that the PS2 never knows that the lid is open and you can perform that swap and play the game. It's pretty simple. If you watch my PS2 videos, it'll make more uh, sense as to what I'm actually doing. Mod chips. So there's a large variety of mod chips. You can purchase these online. It uh, enables additional features like I expressed earlier. And there's a solder and a non-solder version. These are just some examples of different mod chips you can use. And you can see it's, it's going to be a pain because you have this microprocessor with a lot of solder points here. And if you screw it up, if you add too much heat and you destroy the trace on your PS2 motherboard, then... Um, I'm sorry, you're going to go buy a new PS2. Okay, so Swap Magic, these are my own pictures. And here is just a, a picture of my uh, CD and my DVD in Swap Magic. This is what the backside looks like. See, silver pressed. A, you can buy a DVD plus R or DVD minus R from the store. Those work fine on the PS2. But you can't just download a game, burn it, and just put it into your PS2 and, and expect it to work right away. It's not going to work like that. It's going to give you an error screen. So you need a third-party tool to trick the PS2 before you can do your swap with the backup. And this right here is just a, a picture of my slide tool that I use on my fat PS2. But since I have a slim, I have no need for the fat PS2 anymore. Now... The free mic boot. Uh, this is a term you might come across on the internet, and what it is is an exploited memory card method. So how it works is it is a uh, homebrew application. So the user installs this through a memory card using a um, ULaunch Elf uh, application is what they call it, and this allows them to install homebrew applications to the memory cards. So how does it work? Um, so after you get uh, free mic boot installed, all you do is you insert your memory card. It could be like the Sony official 8 megabyte memory card or maybe some no name brand memory card put that into your ps2 turn on the ps2 the ps2 automatically boots off this memory card and it goes into this special uh free mic boot screen and then from there the user just selects hey i want to load my sms uh, video player or i want to load my nes emulator so it loads that and then they're off and running you could do whatever they want it's pretty cool now free mic boot is free like it's a free download you can get it online pretty easy but you need a third party tool to initially install it. i cannot stress this enough people are like hey i have free mic boot how can i install it and i said hey you need a mod chip or a swap magic or a memoir 32 memory card AR Max, or maybe you need to find a friend that has a PS2 tool, or other special methods to allow you to install this onto your memory card. Because if you have a vanilla PS2 and you have free boot files, you cannot install it without having a third party tool in between. And most of the time, it's going to cost you a little bit of chump change to do that installation. Now, um, like I said earlier, you can use, uh, you can boot games off a of USB. And just, these are just some pictures of what you could do as a user to play your games off of USB. So in the left hand picture here, this is just my 500 gigabyte Western digital elements. So, you know, you can boot games off of here using this USB powered. You can use a flash stick, but I don't recommend it because flash sticks are limited life, uh, lifetime cycle and limited capacities. Here, this is a um, an adapter like a SATA or IDE adapter where you can connect to to an internal hard drive. So here you see there's this silver cable. That's a USB cable. This is the power connector. You connect it to your wall. Befaves. It converts your internal hard drive into like a external hard drive on the fly. And you connect it to the PS2. It works fine. Over here is some other hard drives that I have. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of hard drives, I know. So this one here is an external enclosure hard drive that I did by myself. Like I bought a external case and I bought a hard drive and put the two together. This one is just a regular external hard drive that I got from the store. And then this right here is pretty cool. This is called a SATA dock. And what it is, it's just you push this button here, you can pull this hard drive out. So you can insert a two and a half inch or a three and a half inch SATA drive, connect it into the dock, and it has a USB cable on the back and you can connect it to your PS2 and it works fine. So I'm just I'm just telling you about the different ways you can boot games off the USB. That's all I'm doing. No more, no less. No method is better than the other. They're all about equal in my eyes. Except the flash stick. Don't go with the flash stick. Highly recommend a USB hard drive if you can. And then honorable mention is a Memoir 32. I have not used it, but I just want to talk about it for completeness sake. What it is, it's just a memory card that allows you to connect it to the PC so you could transfer save game files. And ultimately, I suppose you can you could put 
homebrew application from the internet onto this memory card and then take it to your PS2 and have the PS2 boot off of it and install the programs that way. So that's another way of doing it. So here's the last slide. Where do I go from here? So what I'm telling you to do is basically decide what you want to do. Do you want to get a mod chip? Do you want to get Swap Magic? Do you want to install Free McBoot? And if you do, then how, how are you going to do it? Huh? Are you going to buy Swap Magic? Are you going to send your your uh, memory card to a to a user to install Free McBoot for you for free and all you pay is shipping and handling back and forth? Do you know a friend that can um, install Free McBoot for you or install a mod chip for you? I don't know. I'm going to leave that decision up to you and for you to do the research. But here are some links that will help ease the pain. You can go to px s-scene.com for has a lot of great modding information in the forums you can go to my blog here you can go to my youtube channel here check out my ps2 videos you can go to eStarland.com to purchase swap magic if that's something you are interested in and then of course you can go to google just type in playstation 2 modding or whatever and there's a lots and lots of different websites and threads where you can learn about it more in detail so i know this is pretty long but i hope that this serves as a great introduction and gets your taste buds a little bit wet for the PlayStation 2 modding experience. And if you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment here on the YouTube page. I will highly uh, encourage it and I'll do what I can to help you out. So once again, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.